I got some questions on my Patreon that I answered there, but then I thought I would also make a video on it because maybe some of you also have the same questions. So you can jump around by looking at the timestamps in the description and going to the question that best strikes you. But let's get right down to it. Adam G asks, have you found a good way to handle changes to your templates over time? An example is if I add something like cost to the front matter in my books template, then I'd have to use set or something else to go add it to all the old templates. Have you run into this? And if so, how do you handle the updates? So said is like a way in Linux to parse text easily. And yes, you can absolutely use that. And I know that there are all sorts of other ways to parse it through the command line, but I just don't want to get into all of the greps. So what I actually do is I open up my Obsidian Vault within my favorite IDE, which is VS Code. Let me show you that now. So this is VS Code. It is free to download. You can go into File here and then Open Folder. And then you select the folder of your vault. Now I've opened my vault recently, so I'm just going to hit that. And this is exactly the same thing that Obsidian works off of, except that VS Code has a really cool feature that Obsidian doesn't, which is search and replace. So let's create a test note here and let's add front matter to try out what Adam did. So let's say old param, this should be changed. I'm going to copy that and then we can go here I'll type in old param and it's already finding the one in test node. If I click on that, it's open just like it would be in Obsidian, but let's say I want to change it to new param. And then here I have this little button here that says replace all. So right now I only have one instance of this, right? But this is so handy if you want to do a lot of different nodes. You just click it once and then it'll say, hey, this is the number of occurrences that I found across this number of files. And then we need to hit replace. And then when you go back to Obsidian, it shows the new parameter. So I've found that that's just the easiest way for me without going into the command line. I am constantly changing my parameters. And so I have this metadata file where I have all of the metadata that I use, all the parameters and values that I expect in my Obsidian notes. So I have these general ones here. So when I put type, here are the values that it could have. And these are other parameters parameters. And then for people, I have these parameters as well. This, this is just so that I don't ever say email underscore address. I know when I look here that it should be email. If I do find that I've been doing email address rather than email, then I can just go into VS Code and say that everything that has email underscore address should be changed to email. And I have them by category as well because different types of notes have different kinds of parameters. A bit of a crunchy one from Robert. He says, hello, Nicole, through your JavaScripts from the DD vault, I was able to successfully create some JavaScript functions working for my Obsidian. Awesome. What I was seeking was a list of quality libraries I can refer toward to see if I can do some functions within Obsidian. I found the template or documentation, but I'm struggling to find other libraries or examples to do some cool stuff. Much appreciated for your insights. And then he followed up with, I'm creating my personalized project manager which integrates with the PKM. I want to track and organize tasks for planning. Each task has their own file within a milestone, an MOC note using data view, which is found in the project note. Some parts are working, but sometimes I get stalled in simple things such as how to delete an Obsidian file within the script or initiating parts of the Obsidian system within the script. I guess the majority of what I seek is Obsidian related functions. Thanks in advance. So Robert, it sounds like, is trying to build his own system of scripts that are very specific for his purpose. And he's struggling a bit with finding out the APIs that he can use that are Obsidian related. I have a few suggestions. My coworker, Marcus Olson, actually created this awesome plugin documentation that is really good. And he used it to create his own plugin. So that's really awesome. I would suggest going there. If you are looking looking into creating your own plugin or maybe just hooking into existing plugins or the default Obsidian um, API, this is a good reference. 
The second is to use DevTools in your browser. Now, Obsidian actually is an Electron app, so you can, even though you don't see the menu buttons, you can still go into DevTools like this. And if you are troubleshooting something, you may be able to see exactly where something stopped working. And you can also um, output things to the console. Like if you're not sure what the API was, then maybe just pass the entire context into the console and then drill down from there because there are some Obsidian plugins, like especially the community ones that are not very well documented and it's easier to just poke around yourself. Uh, I just did command option I to, to get the dev tools to appear in my Obsidian vault, but you will have to check for other operating systems sorry and then another suggestion is to go into a specific plugins documentation if you go to github a lot of them have some sort of wiki for example th this is the templator documentation so you can get to it from the developers github repo and there's a lot of things including examples and how to use particular things so if you're trying to use any of those apis this is a good place to start robert asked about deleting a file in obsidian now i actually didn't know how to do it and i thought that it couldn't be done but he actually wrote back and said that he'd figured out how to do it so thank you robert for sharing that code here it is for anybody who was also trying to do the same thing gotta love learning in public like this is the sort of thing that you would never learn if you just kept quiet about what you were doing Jamie S says, would be great to see a video about YNAB since it's on your top 10 and I'm looking at starting to get back into it. Do you integrate this with Obsidian in any way or mostly keep them separate for your budgeting needs? I love this question because it's not even necessarily related to Obsidian. YNAB, for those of you who don't know, is you need a budget. It is an amazing budgeting app. I know it's really weird to be so enthusiastic about a budgeting app, but this app has really changed my life and my husband's life. It's changed the way that I think about money and it has opened up new opportunities that never would have been possible for someone who is as naturally spendy as me. I will save the rest of my experiences with it and how to use it in some sort of review. Thank you, Jamie, for, for the request. Let me know, actually, if you want to see that so I know if I should prioritize it. I think we as a, as a society, as a race, should talk more about money and not have it be so taboo. I will leave a link in the description. I actually don't need an affiliate link because I get YNAB for free. I love it so much that I joined for like a, a seasonal thing over Christmas because I just I just loved the company so much and wanted to see how they did things. It's like the ultimate fangirling. Um, but I will, in the description, leave my stepdaughter's YNAB link, like referral link, so that maybe she can get some free time. So check that out if anybody wants to, to look into YNAB. But Jamie was also asking about whether I integrate YNAB into Obsidian. I don't. I don't really, I think most of my finances are pretty much under control. I have things automated and I don't really think about finances on a daily basis. And I kind of set my goals and stuff in YNAB as well. So no, no integration with Obsidian at all. Alena Yu says, Hi Nicole, I'd like to know how to set up my workspace in Obsidian. I want to see my daily and weekly note every day when I open Obsidian. But what happens is that, let's say I saved my workspace on June 6, 2022 with a daily and weekly note. But when I open the workspace on June 5, 2022, it still shows June 1. Is there a way how to deal with it? And one more question. Is there a way how to open a daily note in another pane from the calendar? It's quite annoying that I always have to search the note in the list on the left and then open it in another pane. It would be much more comfortable if I'm able to open it right from the calendar on the right. Okay, so that's two questions. The first one was about workspaces. Workspaces is awesome in Obsidian. It is a core plugin that you should enable. I can show you that right now. 
you can go here to core plugins and then here near the bottom you can just um, enable that and once you do that what's really cool is you can have different notes here so like this is note one and then you know what let's open up a portugal note and say that always goes there and then let's open up you know Roberts, how to delete a file in Obsidian. Let's say that you want to save this exact configuration. You can hit Command P and go to Workspaces. Then you can go to Manage Workspace Layouts, and then you have the option to save current workspace layout. So I'm going to save it as test. I'll save that. It says successfully saved layout. And then now we see that test one here. Let's go and load one of these other ones just so I can show you what they might look like. So let's open up TVZ. And when I load that, it automatically, it doesn't open any file, but it does automatically have this search here for a particular tag. So this is cool because I can I don't have to even think about it. It's just like switching from maybe writing a fiction to processing something that has come in from Readwise. So I have a keyboard shortcut for this. And so if I hit test, now it comes up with exactly how you organize those notes. Now what Elena is saying is that she has one for the daily note and unfortunately it doesn't work that way. You can't sort of have dynamic ones yet maybe that's something that someone should work on <laughs> but one workaround that i can see is that you can actually use keyboard shortcuts for your daily note as well so if we go to hotkeys here on the left then we can go daily note and look all of the periodic note stuff comes up and you can select keyboard shortcuts for any of them so this is open today's daily note and I have mine set to command shift K. So anytime I do that, I just jump straight to whatever today's note is. Now that doesn't have to be a specific note. So you don't say like June 1st, 2022, it just goes to today's note. So that's an easy way to get today's note. Now, Elena was also talking about opening up the weekly note. Now you could do this as well. So instead of daily, you can have weekly and here's the next weekly note, previous weekly note. You could do the same thing where in periodic notes, you can set a keyboard shortcut for this week's note. But I think what Elena's trying to do is to be able to bring in weekly objectives, maybe into a daily note. So what I would do in that situation is consider embedding the entire weekly note into your daily note template. If you find that you're always referring to that, then you might as well have a section in your daily note template that embeds this week's note. You can find more about how to do that in the template, in the periodic notes template, in the sample vault that I give out to Patreons. Now, the other thing that Elena was asking about was how to open up a daily note without going through the file explorer here. Now, if you open up the calendar, and if you have the calendar one, then you should be able to go to any of these. So for example, if I click on today's note, which is the 26th, then click that and it automatically brings it up. So this is a good way to scrub through the days that you want on the calendar and have those notes automatically opened without going through the file explorer. Another one from Nikabar. Hello, hi, I am curious how you process emails. I'm looking for a way to capture emails and highlights from them in Obsidian. Thanks, love your content, thank you. Update, sometimes I think the act of putting a question out there yields an answer from the cosmos. I use Missive as my email client and it seems Readwise highlights work 100% for my purpose, but I'm still curious how you process emails in general. I'm not a big fan of emails. Emails are always the bane of my existence. I, I mean, I like receiving personal ones. It's just that there's so much junk out there. Like pretty much any anytime you buy something from a store, you get automatically signed up to their mailing list or whatever. And so I have to shift sift through a lot of junk. But when I do process emails, it's usually because it's from some newsletter that I specifically signed up for. And in those cases, I'm sorry, I can't show this because 
it is using Reader. Readwise Reader is amazing. I mean, Nicobar already mentioned Readwise. I am a huge fan of Readwise and I've been dying to show and talk about their new product, Reader. I've actually been beta testing it since last year. I love it. It's coming. Unfortunately, it's not out yet, so I can't show you, but it does include an email address that you can just forward all of these news newsletters to, or even if it's not a newsletter, even if it's just a normal email, you can forward it to that email address. It shows up in the reader app, and then you can do highlights and all of those highlights get pulled into Obsidian. So I can show you what it looks like when those highlights come up. So this is an example of a newsletter by my friend Lila. Check out her channel over there. And she has a newsletter, a regular one, where she talks about cool things that she's found. Now I automatically have a filter set up in Gmail to forward that to my reader account, my Readwise account. And then in Reader, I went through and I highlighted things that I thought were interesting. Now that automatically gets pulled into my Obsidian and this is what it looks like. It's automatically pulled in the name of the newsletter and that particular installment. And here were my highlights. She said, this is a paradox of self-esteem. If you need it, you don't have it. And if you have it, then you don't need it. <laughs> and then from here, I would process this email the same way that I would any other article or anything that comes into my Obsidian Vault. I get a lot of questions and comments from different social media channels. Thank you so much for all of those. I'm sorry I can't always get to them in time, although I try to answer as much as I can. But I always answer Patreon questions first. Those always get answered. So thank you to the Patreons that want to support me. I appreciate your encouragement. Salamat sa inyong lahat. And for anyone watching this, thank you anyway. <laughs> Adios.